Labels are very important for conveying information to a user. A label is a simple text that cannot be interacted with. You do have options for color, alignment, and wrapping when appropriate. Use labels in your menu or as stylized titles. Let's start with the label style. Labels take a bitmap font with an optional color and background drawable. When designing your font, you usually want the font itself to be white so that you can tint it programmatically later. This is something we covered in the buttons video, so make sure to check that out if you haven't done so already. You wouldn't usually set a background drawable because you'll be using the label within a layout widget that would already have a background. You can achieve some interesting effects if you want your label to stand out, however. This would make for a great heading, for example. A less pronounced heading would be a simple underline. This can be achieved by drawing a line and leaving space above for the content padding. And you would set that padding in a 9-patch drawable. If you're using your labels on a dark background, you should make your label white or close to white. Then make similar styles for each color you want to support. Black for light backgrounds. This makes the whole label this single color. If you want some flexibility when you're coding your UI, leave the color field blank. We can get into label layout now. This is how we create a basic label. And then we add it to the table. You can set the color of a label in code like this. If you want to tint only certain parts of the text, use the color markup language. This is one of the predetermined colors. This tag allows you to specify any color in hexadecimal. Make sure to see the links in the description. One important gotcha is there is a difference between label alignment and cell alignment. It looks centered right now because table cells default to center. So we can expand the cell and right align it. But let me add a new line to the text. See, label has its own internal alignment and the alignment defaults to the left. I know, I know, everywhere else in Scene2D, the default is center alignment. But this makes sense because basically all written and printed text is left aligned. Anyway, this is how you right align the text. There are going to be situations where your text is going to be too long for your layout, especially if you allow for dynamically sizing the layout or setting the text to user input. You have a couple options available to you. The first is enabling ellipses. Note that you have to set the width of the label to actually see it work. You can instead use ellipses with grow or grow X, which is probably what most people want to do when using label in a split pane. There are problems though when you try to shrink it after expanding it. The secret is setting a min width of zero. Now it can grow and shrink to your heart's desire. Ellipses are okay if it's not critical to read the entire text. Otherwise, you should use wrap instead. Again, you need to set the width of the label or grow X the cell for it to work. You don't need to specify a min width because word wrap already makes the min width zero. Labels are very simple since they don't react to user input. They're just there in your UI. So let's move on to text tooltip. You can add a tooltip to any widget in your game. How it works is when you mouse over the widget, a box appears with some information in it. This is very helpful when some things need more explanation, but you don't want to waste the space. A text tooltip style takes an existing label style to function. Set a background to make it easy to read the tooltip information over any other content behind it. Like with the label, you may have a lot more information than can reasonably fit on one line. You can set the wrap width in the style to have a multi-line tooltip. Set it to zero for no wrap. It's really simple to add a tooltip to a widget. It's basically a special listener. If it doesn't function, it's likely because the widget you added it to was set to touchable disabled. For example, tables default to children only, 
so set it to enabled. The tooltip class's defaults are not all that great. For example, it takes a really long time for the tooltip to appear when you mouse over it. You can eliminate this by setting it to instant. It would be terribly annoying to have to do that to every single tooltip you add. Thankfully, we have a default tooltip manager you can configure. To make all tooltips appear instantly, add the following lines. The hide all is necessary to apply the change. If you only want to temporarily make tooltips appear instantly, after a shortcut key press, for example, you can do this instead. There are many more options available for you to explore on your own. Personally, I dislike how text tooltip works. I've created my own widgets as an answer to this. In the future, we'll go over how to create your own custom widgets. Speaking of custom widgets, it will be worth it for you to explore alternatives to label. I made a video on Texture Typist which will teach you how to do far more than just coloring your text to make it stand out. The strength of LibGDX is its third-party libs. That's it for labels and text tooltips. Next up will be all about getting text input for the user with text field and text area. If your weapon's low, please use mine. We don't fuck with fonts.